Welcome back everyone to the Valley's most in-depth weather forecast video, Weather for Weather Geeks, Thursday evening. It is the 26th day of October, only a handful of days left in the month, and the month is going to end on kind of a, with kind of a bang, if you will, with a cold front marching eastward early next week. Actually, a couple of cold fronts heading our way, one over the weekend, the more significant one, though, on schedule for early next week, bringing us our coldest air of the season so far. But in the meantime, the pattern is a warm one today. Much like yesterday, we didn't exactly have an abundance of sunshine out there today, but uh, temperatures had no trouble getting into the lower and middle 70s this afternoon. 75 officially at the airport earlier on today, and I think we'll be in the same neighborhood again tomorrow. In fact, tomorrow's record high of 76 is within reach. We may tie it, perhaps even break it tomorrow afternoon. 72 in Pittsburgh today, 74 in Wheeling. Erie checked in at 78. You know, when you have a southerly component to the wind, of course, there's a lot of hilly terrain just to the south of Erie. So when you get a southerly component to the wind, that wind downslopes off those higher terrain or those uh, higher elevations um, just inland. And so the air warms as it sinks into the Erie area right along the shores of Lake Erie. So yeah, you get uh, warmer temperatures there when you have the right wind direction. We have a couple of patches of green on the radar this evening, but uh, if you've been following the weather for a long time and if you're kind of a weather nerd or weather geek, you know this is called Virga, precipitation that evaporates before it reaches the ground because the air is simply too dry between the cloud level and the ground level for the uh, precipitation to survive the trip all the way down from those cloud bases, which are, you know, in some cases up at eight, ten thousand 10,000 feet above our heads. And so there's a lot of opportunity for those raindrops to dry up well before they reach the ground. We have a doozy of a cold front out across the middle of the country this evening. In fact, I'll draw it for you, although you don't really need me to draw it for you, I don't think. It's pretty easy to find. It is right here. 65 in Omaha. It was in the 70s a few hours ago. 79 in St. Louis. Look at Billings. 16 degrees. The coldest air mass of the season so far de descending into uh, the northern plains and northern Rockies this evening. That's uh, a sign of things to come. Now, of course, it's not going to be that cold around here, but that's the air mass that is coming to the south and to the east. Week one of the high school football playoffs. Friday evening, it's not going to feel like high school football playoff time. It's going to feel like a September evening, early September even. Upper 60s, lower 70s at kickoff. Friday evening, I think we are dry in a southwest wind between 5 and 10 miles per hour. What a couple of seasons we've had for weather on Friday nights during high school football season. So, next few days, uh, we start with clouds and maybe a sprinkle Friday, but the sun comes out in the afternoon. We'll call it partly cloudy for the balance of the evening. Here's our first cold front then, Saturday morning. There's not going to be much moisture with this, but there could be a shower in some spots. I do think that this drier air up here will start to filter in as we go deeper into the afternoon. So by 1, 2, 3 o'clock, it's actually going to be pretty decent outside. Now, it's not going to be in the mid-70s anymore. It'll be more seasonable, but with some sunshine, hey, upper 50s to around 60, that's going to be the best part of the weekend. And I say that because our first front kind of stalls and a wave of low pressure starts riding along it, and that wave of low pressure is going to bring us rain uh, Saturday night into Sunday morning. Now, if this were the dead of winter, if the air mass were cold enough, uh, this would be a good snow setup for us, or at least mixed precip precipitation uh, setup with a a boundary stalling out and then moisture riding up and over that boundary. That's a good recipe for sleet and freezing rain in some situations, a thump of snow in some situations, but hey, it's still October. It's not that cold just yet. So this is just going to be a kind of a chilly, damp start to our day on Sunday. By Sunday afternoon, a little break in the action before steadier rain probably returns later Sunday night and heading into Monday morning. So, Penguin game day forecast. We talked about Friday evening being fine for high school football. Saturday afternoon at the Ice Castle, I think we're okay. Clouds will occasionally break for some sun. Temperatures upper 50s to around 60. Over the next 72 hours, rainfall totals probably, uh, you know, region-wide average is going to be around a half an inch. Something like that. So, uh, nothing that's going to cause big issues. Just kind of an inconvenience, certainly. If you are going to be out and about, particularly Sunday morning, if you're heading off to services or doing anything else Sunday morning, just plan on a wet go of it. Before we get to uh, a little mo bit more in the way of a chat uh, for the winter forecast, let's actually uh, take a look at the middle of next week. We're going to switch things over to the European model here and show you that uh, yeah, it's quite possible we're going to see the season's first snowflakes middle of next week. This is Halloween. Um, it now looks like we're probably dry for Halloween during the daylight hours, including for trick-or-treat. If your community has trick-or-treat Tuesday evening, at this point it looks to be pretty tranquil, although it's going to be chilly. This next disturbance is a pretty potent one. It arrives later Tuesday night, 
And yeah, there's some blue here on the map. I think the air mass will probably be cold enough to support at least snow flurries here and there Tuesday night and into the first half of the day on Wednesday. Here's the European model next Wednesday afternoon. At this point, the air mass in the lowest few thousand feet is probably warming up into the 40s, so uh, this will probably be mostly liquid that falls Wednesday afternoon, but scattering of snow showers early and a scattering of rain showers for the first afternoon of the month of November. It's going to be you know, a pretty cold start to the month. Uh, we're talking no better than the lower 40s, probably Tuesday af or Wednesday afternoon, I should say. Beyond this, we're going to stay chilly, it looks like, through the end of next week, but I think this area of high pressure will build in and give us sunshine, pretty quiet weather for the uh, last couple of days of uh, the, the work week. But yeah, Tuesday night, a few snowflakes around. Wednesday morning, maybe a few snowflakes as well. Speaking of snowflakes, we're two weeks away from my annual Winter forecast making its debut two weeks from today on 21 News at 5, 6, and 11, and right here online. We're hoping to do better than last year. My forecast was lousy last year. Many people's forecasts were lousy last year. We have El Nino this year. Last year we had the third and final, you know, in a three in a row stretch, uh, La Nina. We had some other things going on and some real kind of technical meteorology uh, with regards to what happened in Asia last winter, which was kind of unusual. It kind of threw a real monkey wrench into the pattern across the lower 48 states. And as it turns out, even though we were in a La Nina last winter, the pattern behaved a little more like El Nino. I'm not going to get into the details about why, because it's kind of, you know, it's really technical as far as the meteorology of that is concerned. And as I said, it kind of has its origins in Asia, but it made for a lousy seasonal forecast. Our forecast for last year, we, we expected wetter than average conditions overall precipitation rain and snow combined it was close to average we'll give that a c but we called for near average snow it wasn't anywhere near average it was way below average in fact it was our least snowy winter since uh before 1950 um and we called for near average temperatures of course uh it was almost six degrees warmer than the average last winter so we're going to give that a d minus uh so yeah we're going to hope to do better this year you know it was one of those years where everybody was everybody's forecast went sideways in a hurry because of a few different reasons um, and, you know, sometimes that's going to happen. These seasonal forecasts are hard. We put a lot of research into them. Uh, there's a lot of science that goes into these, and you can do all the work and put in the hours and the blood, sweat, and tears, and then something happens that's not predictable on a seasonal scale, and your forecast goes sideways, and it's really frustrating because you work really hard on these things, but it's the nature of seasonal forecasting. Occasionally, you're going to have a bad year. We had a bad year last year. I think we'll do better this year. We're going to talk all about it two weeks from today right here online and on 21 News at 5, 6, and 11. Hope to see you then. Have a great Friday and a great weekend, everyone. I'll see you back here for weather for Weather Geeks on Monday.